requirements. This is part of the fun. I've never actually built a camera before. It's just, it's an unfamiliar territory for me. So it makes it kind of fun because I don't know exactly what I'm getting into. The requirements are fairly simple. We'll go through a list. Why? Why am I building this? Well, let's get back to that. What exactly is 4x5? Well, let's, let's work our way up to it. This is a roll of 35 millimeter film, which almost everyone on the planet has used this at some point. It wasn't born in the last 20 years. <laughs> So these are the, this is the side of the frame. These are, these are 35 millimeter frames. So that's 35. One step up from that is uh, something called 120 film, or I guess 220. Actually, I'm not even sure why it's called 220 versus 120. Um, so here, this is some color film. It's called roll film, technically 220. Uh, it comes in a little pouch like this. This is slightly bigger than 35 millimeter film. This is what they call medium format film. And you can get into this very inexpensively in terms of equipment just by buying this plastic Holga camera. Super easy to use. It's got a fixed lens. Uh, actually, it's kind of fun. So if you're kind of interested in photography and you want to get into medium format cameras, this is a very inexpensive way to do it. You can get these all over the place. It's a little involved in the sense that usually they have light leaks, so you end up using gaffer tape just to make it function. But it's a fun adventure and it's not expensive. So, medium format film comes in these sizes, and you can see the individual frames. This is roll film again, so it's got multiple, essentially each exposure being one little square here on the film. So you can see compared to the 35 millimeter slide, the uh, film area is probably four times, four times the surface area. And this is the film for four by five. So it is probably four times the surface area medium format. So this is, this is getting to a much larger piece of film. This is called sheet film. And you actually load it into the camera just like this in the dark, but you load it into the camera as a sheet rather than a roll. So it's a whole different thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna build a camera that will support this format film, large format film. So there's even larger formats than this, and it's uh, eight by 10, 11 by 14, five by seven. Um, but again, this is, you can see it's more or less five inches long, four inches wide. I think the British call this five by four. Here in America, we call this four by five. So why would you do this? Well, we'll get back to that. <laughs> Let's go over the requirements. <laughs> so I want it to be wood where possible. And uh, I don't, I don't want to use any more metal than I have to. I'd love to use just wood where I can. So that's, that's basically one of my requirements. Uh, what kind of wood, cherry, maple, walnut, we'll see. We're gonna get there. Each one has a certain property that I may like, weight, color, uh, durability, um, stability as well, lenses. So uh, I bought these used. These are old, somewhat old lens. This is a, uh, a Schneider lens. And uh, I'm not actually sure how old this lens is, but this is, um, yeah, 210. This is a 210 millimeter which in uh, large format is, um, I'll list it here. I don't remember exactly how this equates to 35 millimeter uh, equivalent, but it's, it's essentially a portrait lens. It's, it's gonna be a little longer than what they call a normal lens. Um, normal lenses are essentially what you see, the, what the eye would see. So this is gonna be a little more of a telephoto. So I, I like this for the idea of doing portraits. Um, and uh, the other, lens that I purchased was this, um, I think this is a 90 millimeter, also a Schneider. It'll be better for uh, uh, environmental portraits where you're trying to include a lot of the space um, around the subject as well as maybe landscapes. So I have two lenses. Um, they're not terribly expensive, but they're not cheap either. I think each one was uh, around $200, I believe. 
Um, and they're, they're decent. They're not the best you can buy, but they're decent and they will get me started here. The interesting thing about these lenses is that the shutter is built into it. So um, essentially you set the, um, and I've never used this before, so I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna mess this up, but uh, these are the f-stops. So you set the f-stop here, and then you have the shutter speed here. So this one goes to 1 500th, all the way down to bulb, which means you can hold it open for uh, as long as you want with a cable release. Um, it also has a uh, port, I believe, might be this one, a hot shoe essentially for, for flash or for if you want to do that. I have no idea if it even works on these lenses, so hopefully it does. These should be okay, but um, we'll find out because, again, I don't know a lot about them. I've never used them before, but uh, it's going to be exciting to figure out how these, how these function. Uh, so the nice thing about having the shutter in the lens is that you don't have to have it on the focal plane, which is typical to like a DSLR, like a 35 millimeter camera, typically has the shutter right in front of the film. This will put the shutter on the lens side. So what sort of metal am I going to use? Um, parts of the camera will have to have non-wood, knobs, um, dials, threads, uh, uh, brackets that hold pieces together where it's critical to have them held together. Pieces that fold together are going to have to have hinges. So um, I want it to be brass if I can. On eBay I bought some things like this which are a brass track um, to run a gear and I bought some gears as well. So these gears will, will uh, essentially run along the track like this so I can I can drive the essentially the bed of the camera back and forth to move the the uh, lens further away from the film and closer to the film for focusing. So um, this is kind of neat. I bought this a couple years ago and again this project has been delayed a few times but I, I, I have again I, I want it to be brass where I can. Um, I don't want plastic in this so I can avoid it so it's going to be kind of neat to put this together. Um, this was surplus uh, brass track but I probably got a pretty good deal on eBay for this. So. So I am struggling a little bit with form versus function, and this is sort of a design element that I think the uh, marble machine designer talks about a lot. <laughs> is I, I want it to be a combination of things that are kind of neat to look at and also function, but I don't want it to look like any other camera out there. So I don't know. We're we're still I'm still in the design phases on this. It's going to be kind of fun to see how that turns out, to, but um, it's a fun process to think about these things. Uh, and then I'm going to probably use some aluminum. Um, so I did buy some uh, sheet aluminum here uh, today, which uh, I'm going to use for the lens mounts. So the lenses uh, have, um, they, they come apart. And so this is the uh, rear element and this is the front element, and they sandwich uh, what's called a lens board, and the lens board holds it in place, and that lens board then attaches to what they call a front standard. And uh, so, um, in order to hold that, I, I could use wood, I could use any type of metal, but what I decided to use is just a piece of aluminum um, that is, I believe, for thickness, uh, 64 thousandths. Um, so it's fairly lightweight, but it will do a good job. This is four inches thick, or four, I'm sorry, four inches wide, 10 inches long. The good thing is the, the width is exactly what I want. I want it exactly four inches by four inches, so I'll, I'll cut this, get that going, and then I'll probably end up anodizing this or painting it black in some way if I can find a paint that won't just fall off. I don't want to leave it raw aluminum. I don't like the look of this, um, but that's just me. So we'll see, this will be evolving. Uh, the bellows on a camera. So I'm going to open this right now just to show what this is like. This is um, these are what they call film holders, um, and uh, this is a Lisco brand. I'm so new at this, I've never actually taken a single photo with a large format camera. So, and my first exposure is going to be on my camera. That's my plan. I, I could have bought one. I could have bought a very inexpensive large format 
like a chronographic, uh, the old press cameras. Um, uh, when I was at the at the store looking, buying this, these things and the lenses, I was very close to just buying a crown graphic and not building this at all. But I thought, oh, I just want to build this camera. I've always wanted one. I want to make it myself. Um, in order to hold the film, you need a what they call a dark slide. I'm sorry, a film holder which has a dark slide on front of it. Oh, let's see, brand new with a warranty. <laughs> I'm not actually sure how old these are. Maybe someone can comment about when these were made. I was told at the shop, sort of offhand, that we may have been they may have been manufactured in the '60s, and um, I don't know if that's true or not. They do look like they might be in that vintage. I don't know. I, I did a quick Google search on this company, and it didn't have a lot of information about them. But it's kind of fun. What this is is essentially a holder for this piece of film. So this film is held in place with this plastic holder. Uh, the way you launch these or load them is they've got like a little tab here. You spin that open, pull the what they call a dark slide out of the way. This is the first time I've actually put a, a 4x5 sheet of film in here. So do not do as I do. Um, hmm. Why does that not work? Open this up, then it opens? Oh yeah, okay. So here we go. So now it allows you, when you open the dark slide, so it's got a lot of safeties, because if I if you put a piece of film in this holder and it's unexposed film, any light that touches it that doesn't come through the lens is going to be a light leak. So essentially you open this up, flip this guy back, emulsion side uh, should face the, uh, the lens, and this goes in like this. This may be backwards. Do not copy me. This is the first time I've ever put a 4x5 piece of film inside a, a, a film holder, so do not copy this. I may be completely wrong. Uh, and then this dark slide goes over the front, and then you lock it in place. Uh, you can even do labels on here. Um, uh, yeah, so so here's how the, the essentially the camera works, which is very simple, is you have the lens, and you have a film plane film holder, which is also called the film plane. The light comes in the lens and projects onto this plane here. Um, there is an element between to block the light called the bellows. And the bellows is, um, is what I'm thinking that I could buy. It's a little like, if you make it yourself, it's a little like origami. I've never actually made one before, so it'll be very entertaining if you'd like to watch me make it. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not sure even how to do it. it all it has to be is light proof, um, somewhat weatherproof, excuse me, light proof and somewhat weatherproof. Um, so I may end up buying it, I may make it, we'll see. Uh, there's also a thing called ground glass and this is, this is a component that allows you to focus the camera. So that's a critical aspect is of making a large format camera work is I have this lens, I have film, how do I know that the lens is projecting a sharp image onto this plane, right? So there's a, the film is waiting to be exposed, how do I know it's focused? And the only way to tell that is either by mathematics, you could probably figure it out with some accurate measurements between, and so a little bit of science, figure out how to place these appropriately, make the exposure, but most people will, uh, replace the film plane with another device, which is called a ground glass. And then you remove the uh, ground glass and replace it with the film holder, do the exposure, and you're done. I got a little ahead of myself, so film holder, we already talked about. Um, I'm gonna use um, these versions. There are some you can make out of wood if you want. I'm just, I don't wanna do that at this point, so I'm gonna use these for now. I could always replace these with wood versions, but for now we're gonna use these. There are two that came in the box, so that'll get me at least started. Uh, each film holder can hold two sheets of, of film, one on each side, so I can hold a total of four sheets of film. Weight's also a thing. Um, I, I'd like this camera to be as light as possible, so no heavier than it has to be, um, just for obvious reasons that I'm gonna be carrying this thing out in the field or hiking with it. I'd like it to be fairly lightweight. There's also capabilities of this which are gonna be sort of interesting is do I want uh, 
on the front lens standard, which essentially is the, the element or the, the mechanism that holds the lens and allows it to move and rotate and slide and go up and down and tilt and uh, shift. So, or swing rather. So there are essentially some standard movements you'd like. Not all cameras support all of the movements. So I'm at this point, I think I'd like to have tilt, shift, rise, fall, and swing. It should give me a lot of ability uh, while taking portraits to get uh, the subject in focus in a lot of different ways, um, but also landscapes, architecture. Um, so, there are some trade-offs with that, which I'll get into. Uh, then the rear standard, I haven't decided yet what movements I want. I think there are many that you can have. You can have the same that you have in the front, which again is tilt, shift, rise, fall, and swing. Um, they all have their benefits, but they also have their complexity. So if you add those into the camera, you've limited your ability to be able to have it close easily or um, uh, become a field camera, which I'd like this to be. And that's essentially the next uh, item, which is I want this to be a field camera, which means I can go hiking with it. Typically field cameras will fold up into a box and that's what I would like. Um, so, but that folding mechanism is something that is uh, restricted or it's, it's a requirement that makes it more difficult to have a lot of movements without more complexity in the camera system. And we'll go over that. I, I'd show you a camera, but again, I haven't built this yet. So I'm using a lot of words to describe this. I may go back and show you some screenshots of some things that I've been looking at. Um, there's many, many cameras and styles out there. Most of them have similar characteristics. This camera may or may not have those characteristics. They'll have many of them. So tripod. So this is the last element. Um, probably the simplest part about this, but I do want the tripod to be wood and uh, I'm going to use probably maple or ash to minimize vibration. Uh, I thought about using an aluminum or carbon fiber um, tripod, but that's going to be, it's going to look funny I think with this camera and I'd rather have it be all wood. Wood has a very nice property that it actually does isolate vibration well. Many times you're, you're making exposures of more than a minute. And if there's any vibration or shake in the camera, that will be transferred into a blurry image. Um, a solid, stable tripod that looks cool is also going to be good. So maple or ash. Um, I could buy this as well. There's several very, very nice uh, tripod makers out there that I may end up buying, but we'll see. And lastly is the head of the tripod, which is sort of way on the list, down on the list. I can resolve this at any point, but I'd like it to be a uh, pan and tilt rather than a ball head. Ball heads are, uh, there's a lot of opinions about this, but it's hard to manage with a, a substantial camera. Um, so pan and tilt are nice because you can rotate them or move them forward up and down. And I think that that's probably what I'm going to end up with. So it's a style choice, but it's going to be one that I think I'll stick with. So that's, that's the intro. This video is not meant to be a build. It's just meant to be my thought process right now of how I want to get into this. And maybe some of the, uh, you, you, as this build evolves, I, again, I like to have this overarching view of what I'm trying to build what the requirements are, what this looks like, where I want to flex on this, and where I want to make adjustments to make the, easy, the build easier. Um, in the end, I want to build a camera that works. Um, so that's the paramount uh, biggest concern here is I want to make something that is fun to use and works. Um, uh, the rest of this is going to be style and capability. Do I have enough capability to do all the things I'd like to do? And that's, uh, that's sort of the design process. So I'll, I'll go through that as I build the camera. Um, and this won't this won't be a, a couple day thing. This is going to be probably over over weeks or a couple months um, before I'm done. But um, I've wanted a camera. This is the why. <laughs> All the way back to the why. I used to work in a camera store back in the 90s, um, so a very long time ago. And uh, I had a friend with a Cron Graphic, which again that's the old press camera, four x five. I just loved the images he got out of it. I was shooting mostly 35 millimeter uh, cameras at the time. 
this is sort of right on the cusp of digital. Digital were just starting to come out with uh, digital backs at the time, and uh, they were very expensive and very low resolution, so they were sort of out of reach for most of us, but at the time, and four by five was sort of the way to get sort of this incredible uh, capability, uh, very, what we call now large pixel uh, files, you know, well over a hundred megapixel. Um, so, uh, but there's a process with it. So I was, I was fascinated by that. I never got into it because I was, I was sort of daunted by the process that they were describing in, in the whole flow, but I'm ready to kind of take a lot, take that on now. So, uh, uh, so that was a long time ago that I originally wanted this camera, and uh, two years ago I bought the gears and the track off eBay, so that was sort of what I was thinking at the time, I wanted to get it going, and then two years went by and here I am. So I thought, okay, let's do this now, we're not going to wait anymore, let's get, let's get this first prototype camera going, we'll see how it goes, and take some photos with it, and see how we like the process. And if we want to make more cameras too, it could be that I, I, I like the build process and I want to make more. And we'll take some photos and see how this thing turns out. So that's it. So exciting stuff. Hope you stay with me through the journey. Feel free to subscribe. Like this video if you, if you are getting some stuff out of it. Hang on for more videos where we're going to be actually doing the build. Thanks for watching.